hello everyone welcome back to this part one and in this part one i will quickly explain the process of comping the shot from start to end but first you can see on my screen so this is the side by side comparison this is the raw render coming from blender with all the deep layers and this is a deep combined beauty render and this is the final comp so you can see how much we're going to push this raw render into this final look we're going to add many layers like you can see on the water we have this fog layer we're going to add this lens layer these god rays and we're going to balance this image a lot in the compositing first we will going to take a look at take a look at some uh, concepts some theory about you know deep compositing and how to comb this kind of big uh, scale shot in nuke and how to optimize your nuke to render all the layers and to render the final as well because if you're trying to render all these layers with a deep and uh, with all this correction it will not gonna render in your machine it will take uh, ages to render so we are going to uh, learn about the optimization as well because the optimization part is very 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 important especially uh, this kind of big scale scene and big numbers of layers with deep so uh, you can see this is the side by side comparison and i will quickly show you one more version in this version because we have full creative freedom so i made a one more version with the haze loop so you can see uh, this is the haze version and if i compare with this render and this let me just play side by side so you guys can clearly see the difference so the first one in the left is the daylight one we already saw that but in the right one is the what i try to achieve is the fog version as i said uh, a creative process the look development in you you can do anything because uh, in the all layers we have all the controls we have all the layers all the lights everything we have so you can manipulate how you want it's basically up to you where you want to go so you can see the second version i added a haze look at the depth haze and this is how it's looking obviously i need to add the sunlight to justify the light direction because we have a very strong uh, sunlight coming from the right but i'm happy overall of this uh, foggy look and i will try to show you what is my reference for this fog one and you can see while comping this shot i collected many references like this one and this is so we will going to see step by step the references on all those so this is my haze look reference i'm not following the light and colors and everything i'm just following the depth hazing how this uh, you know this depth haze is going on in this scene from this direction right so i'm just following that and based on that i want to you know make that hazy look uh, what i did in this shot so first let's go and check as i said uh, the theory and the whole graph i made for you so you guys can understand the whole structure of this comp and how i start this one you know what you need to do to you know uh, make this better and load faster and render faster as well so welcome to deep compositing course and this is the uh, theory part guys so i'm going to some uh, i'm going to talk about a lot of things in this part a deep compositing course and what you're going to learn and you're going to learn in this one these many points so start to end deep compositing process and uh, industry stand up deep workflow deep script template and how to handle full cg uh, deep assets how to use deep data and the ss workflow which is very very important and then we're going to learn how about the optimization which is very 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 important role while you're comping big level of shot and working with deep, deep data and we will going to also see the different ways of using deep data not just to add a layer on top of each other we're also going to see some use case of deep data and we'll going to see how many assets we have once we start comping the shot and obviously the reference is very important we're going to make a nuke template and the importance of you know slap com and mini com then we will start building the nuke script from scratch and i will also provide you the template so you can use that template in your future shots as well so these many things we're going to learn so let's zoom in and step by step and see this so start to end deep compositing process the industry standard deep workflow so these many things we i'm going to show you in the nuke script in the optimization we have a few points so let's open this one and see how to use deep data and how to work faster and optimize new script so the way we need to use deep data we need to optimize a lot to in order to use the deep data we need to do a lot of pre-comps to optimize the new to optimize the comp workflow and how to work faster it's the same thing into optimize your whole script 
creating a bounding box from uh, adding a crop to you know uh, doing a pre-comp and nuke script optimization all these optimization i will show you practically in nuke let's close this one and working with deep data so why deep so the deep is allow us to uh, merge two layers together just like we are merging two layers in a 3d space so they will merge based on their uh, z space value so it's called the uh, deep value and if i open this one you will see this is a very common in hollywood for big studios because it allow you to merge all 3d renders together in a comp seamlessly and why we are merging in comp when working in a big shots with tons of 3d renders like env fx fire and atmos required to render full without hold out each other we need deep data to merge them together in comp and get full control over it i will show you in the script what this mean so we're not doing any holdout we just rendering full element and then we are merging in a deep so it will merge in between if the layer is coming in between so it's like a 3d deep merge so it's based on their 3d value in the space so let's close this one an advantage of deep so what is the advantage of deep? the first one uh, we don't get any edge issues while comping uh, 2d elements or any 3d element on existing deep render so as i said uh, you can use deep in many many ways so the one of the ways you can use deep to you know uh, add extra element uh, in your layers so this is also we're going to see in the uh, what you call in the new script when you do a defocus is solve the defocus artifact in the edges so this is the very big advantage uh, when you're doing a deep deep defocus so in deep uh, as, as, as i said we have a uh, information of all the layers so when you merge one layer on top of the another layer you're not gonna see the art artifact when you're doing a defocus this because the data is already there we just need to use a uh, deep defocus in order to uh, access that data and the third one we can use a uh, deep data to hold out 2d elements and merge them seamlessly on existing deep render so uh, this one is very uh, similar to uh, this so they both are the same uh, topic but i just written differently so you guys can understand uh, there are two ways you can use this one you can directly merge uh, with the deep data and you can do a holdout and then you can merge in a 2d way i will show you this one in the new script so you will understand better we don't need to merge 3d element properly background to foreground a and b so uh, as i said uh, this is the very uh, big advantage of using deep there is no uh, foreground and background uh, kind of uh, principle apply in a deep because deep will merge two elements together based on their uh, z space deep value that's the advantage of deep you don't need to do the a b properly merge them together let's close this one now deep is heavy yes it is heavy let's open this one we need to optimize the comb to work faster so we're going to see the optimization of the deep is it really required let's open this one and deep compositing is very common workflow in a big hollywood studios like mpc dnec ilm and beta fx if you're going to work in big studios the deep is required but if you are working in your home uh, to your personal project and your shot is not uh, that big scale it's the very small shot then in that case you don't need a deep but if you make a habit of using deep then it's very uh, good to have because these big studios required deep compositing and if you render deep in your machine as well you can you know uh, practice with the deep so that's the advantage okay now let's so we understand these many things let's see the assets what we have so uh we need to organize the assets so if i, if I show you my script you can see on top i have this uh, big asset backdrop and we have everything here and everything is linked to everything below so that is what we're going to create all this asset so that is in this uh, asset tab so organize the asset with backdrops so we already did we organize the all the asset like camera reference hdr lens distortion uh, deep holdout mats and deep asset references deep merge all data and slab comp as well make master asset with stamp this is a very very big thing guys make sure to use a uh, stamp i'm pretty sure everyone you know about this stamp so you can see how, how many layers and how many different areas i'm using this stamp so we don't need to copy paste the whole thing in the entire script so we can just keep the one asset one read node and you can use that in a multiple areas like this you can see this layer i'm using in a many places so make sure you use that so one deep one read node and you can use anywhere like this see this one i'm using five times i'm using this layer this is for optimization as well and the third one is very important like pre-comp assets if required 
So similarly here, I did a pre-comping my all asset. You can see the right node and pre-comping it. Everywhere you're going to see this one here also, I'm pre-comping and I can view from here. Here also I'm pre-comping the uh, mats and then you can use this one in a different, different area if, if it is required. You can see I, these two I'm using in the down. So do the pre-comping, it's very, very uh, necessary. Okay, let's close this one now. And let's quickly see the reference. This is the reference. Collect a reference is based on the short look, creative look dev. All right, let's open this one and for examples. So these are the examples which I already show, but I just quickly show you. So these many references I collected based on the short. So these may, these are the references which is very close to uh, my raw render and what I want from and what I have in my in my mind what look I need to achieve. So these are very very close to and you can see I will just quickly show you the, all the references. So this one is very good for the you know uh, water fog kind of thing and this is for the haze one we already saw that and some of some of them are uh, I think the 3D render I think this is the 3D render but this is actual real uh, plate. You can see all these are very very nice references so you can collect as many references as you can and you can uh, take a small part from this reference just like you can take a reflection how the light is behaving this uh, light on the leaves you can see the subsurface scattering all these good thing and you can see this is like a very what you call uh, overcast look because there is no proper light direction here also it's very overcast but we have a haze light direction in this side so there there are a lot of lot of things you can see from this reference you can this one also see hey look we have nice blue light coming from the top sky obviously is uh, overexposed because then only you can see these shadow areas detail very nicely cool so these are the references here and let's go back and close this one how to make a template so let's open this one let's talk about the templating because the templating is very 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 useful in your future as well because if you are working in the mini shots and all the shots have a, a same kind of cg and same kind of cg in that shot so you need to make a new comp template it will help you to you know use that same setup and just tweak some setting and you will get the same look it's easy to understand the script yes so template is very easy to understand if the multiple people are working on the same shot then the template is very very useful when to make template so if you have a sequence with the multiple shots and that and that shot require the same asset uh, same comp task multiple multiple artists then it's highly recommend to have a comp template so as i said the multiple shot have a same comp task same asset then you can make a comp template so everyone can use that template to stay organized and and you can maintain the comp look how to make template so making a template we need to first we have a five points here the first point we need to follow the pipe structure so this is very important and you can see in this script also this is our uh, b pipe uh, spine this is all the a side layer is coming here and they are merging at the end here and then we have additional uh, lens effects and everything understand the sequence so when you're making a template uh, if you have multiple shots you need to understand the sequence and based on that you need to add some extra options if this shot have this uh, particular angle is require maybe lens flare but the other shot is not require lens flare so you need to adjust that so you can use the uh, lens flare in this shot or not on the other shot add a precom node so when i make this template i added a precom node everywhere in each layer so i will show you the empty template okay so as you can see i have this uh, empty template which is very very similar to what i com this in this template you can see it's a where it's a total blank template there is nothing inside it's totally empty we have all the backdrops all the precom node in place so you can do a precom and you can place it the object properly even i have the stamp creator for the data layers we're going to see step by step of this uh, template look and this is the blank and you can see they are both similar most of the stuff you can see it's here everything is same because here we need to do a lot of stuff and these are the all the layers so total we have eight layers four five six seven eight eight layers of deep layers in this shot now uh, add a necessary node in the template like defocus setup lens distortion and hold out and grain setup so we need to add those also but in my case i keep it completely blank so you can add your own grain setup and lens distortion and everything but i place it the backdrop so you can understand where you need to put uh, i mean just like you need to put softness here then chromatic here then lens distortion at the end like that let's close this template one now now the slap comp and mini comp why we need to do that so to get the overall short look without changing much the raw cg render so uh, once we get all the layers 
we need to do the slab comps. Let me just delete this template and let's zoom in. So here we have the slab comp and these many layers I have. And what I did, I just uh, pre comp these layers. I just merge all the deep layers here. It will give you a sense. I mean, how everything going to merge and is there any issue with the deep or you need to render anything separate? And if you have a frame issue or something like that, you can fix it. And so that is why it's very important to you know, do a slab comp quickly. So you can see I'm just using one merge node to do the pre comp for the, all the layers. I'm not doing any extra stuff like I'm not making a proper AB pipe. So just merging all the layers. You can see we have multiple layers here. So every layer I'm merging together. See my final look, how it's looking. So this is the last, first, last frame and this is the first frame. So I can understand if I require anything extra or I need to fix anything. Okay, how? Let's see the how. So the mini comp is a smaller version of your main comp. It's uh, only including the pre-comp mostly. So in this case, I didn't pre-comp anything. I just, uh, for the viewing purpose, I just made a slap comp so I can compare with my final output. You can see I'm just placing in the end also. So I can compare uh, this raw render with my final output like this one, like that. Let's close this and get started with building a comp in Nuke. Now we're going to make a template. Then we will going to see the whole comp structure. Oh, let's open. Okay, so for this part, I think uh, I we will take a look at this one in a part two. I think the part one is, I think is fine. I mean, this much information in the part one is fine. So let's jump to the part two and then we will start this.